A code interface comes in two parts. The first kind of interface is called an abstract interface. An abstract interface describes data and describes functionality. As mentioned in the previous video, C has a concept of function prototypes. Those are the type of interface where you state what something is about, not how it does what is described. A variable may describe a string, integer, decimal, or date and time. A function may describe the parameters it takes and the data it gives back, if any. A program wants to know about these descriptions in advance. The second kind of interface is called a concrete interface. It's more tangible. In fact, it is tangible. It includes all the descriptive aspects of the abstract interface, but includes the actual data, in the case of variables, and actual functionality, in the case of functions. A compiler and linker uses the first kind of interface where referenced in source code and match parts of code to the other kind of interface. GTK, as an API, provides a set of interfaces to actual functions we can use to make a GUI, graphical user interface. We can also make our own interfaces, and indeed we will. That way we can make the code more modular and create reusable functions we only have to write one time. The best book on that was mentioned by Danny Richards on Quora. She described a book titled C Interfaces and Implementations by David Hansen. He shows how to do interfaces correctly in the C language. I will update that approach in the context of C++ and the use of C APIs organized under C++ namespaces. For now, we will define our first interface that will connect the application context in GTK as well as the application overall to other constituent parts of the application. As you saw, I was setting up tabs in the command line and I typically set a title on each one. One is titled remote, the other is titled local. That way I can be clear in what context I'm operating within. And you can quickly switch tabs by pressing control page down. I almost exclusively use keyboard shortcuts for productivity. So we're starting the application interface and in gedit you can press control shift page down to switch tabs. Actually that may be control alt page down. So this interface will be our first interface, the first of many, where we use a namespace, a C++ namespace, to organize related types, variables, and functions. This particular application will feature no classes, no objects, that we introduce. So there will be no OOP. There will only be functions. And this will give us great flexibility in how we refactor code and modularize an application, but also reduce the amount of code that we end up writing. This application interface will be used to declare functions that 
other parts of the application can refer and then access functionality that exists solely at an application level. Once we go down this road, we will need to namespace qualify the functions that we use and that's where we are at this point. So let's format the code and as we format it, take a look at the application.hpp file. We, we will want to format that as well. However, the way you format headers differ from the way you format implementation files, otherwise known as .cpp or .cxx files. So, our A style definition will need to change. What I will do is duplicate the A style line and have two lines. One line for CPP files and one line for HPP files. That way each can be treated the way they need to be. And this is also a good opportunity to make some changes in gedit so that we can see the code a little better. Once this application interface is defined, it will give us great flexibility in how we're able to retrieve information that is of a recurring nature. For example, we will use a database later on defined in SQLite. This database exists in a file and this file name is commonly referenced throughout the application. The application interface in this case will give us the ability to refer to that database file name in a manner that is easy to maintain easy to recognize and reduces duplication of effort and prevents us from having to change the name of the file name in a dozen different places. So with the code formatted and ready to go, let's send it up, let's build it, let's build a copy and let's see what the resultant executable looks like. The approach here is to build the application in little steps. Don't write too much code at once. Your life will be much easier if you take it small steps at a time. We want to introduce interfaces, in this case an application interface. However, we want to make sure that we do it in a reliable and dependable way. That is, the functionality of the program should not change and will not change. Simply, the way it's organized internally will change. All the same code will exist, but under different names, organized in a different way, in a slightly different way. And let's look at some changes to our text editor. There we are. And that should make things a little more readable. So, as you see on line 20, there is part of our namespace to the left of what's called the scope resolution operator. Right? The scope resolution operator is basically two colons next to each other and they separate different naming hierarchy, naming hierarchy levels. And so in this application, I've gotten it down to where I use a mixture, a mixture of 
C naming convention and C++ namespaces that overall reduce the number of namespace hierarchy levels that I that I should introduce. So the application has been built as the build server um, indicates. Let's uh, bring down a copy and run that application to see what it does. And you'll note a little stylistic convention there. Not really a stylistic convention, but a matter of completeness. We will take the exit code from the uh, create method and return that in the executable. So let's go ahead and send that up and let's build that just so our executable is complete. And while we're bringing code down or sending code up, let's make sure we can reliably bring code down. Let's create a script called get dev environment output. So we have created a new script file that's based off of the send code to VM script. And in this case, it will be a little easier to modify the script file. In modifying the script file, Basically, we're going to reverse the order of terms that we pass to the SCP executable. And that seems pretty straightforward, but it's actually not as easy as it seems. Because while it is true we are reversing the direction we're not exactly using the same things in this scenario. In the send code to VM script, we're sending the source code directory up to, we're sending the source code directory up to the build server and we're also sending the build directory that contains our build scripts up to the build directory. But when we retrieve, we want to retrieve only the single file. So, our script should reflect that. And we've ran the uh, executable and noticed that our activate function no longer works now that we've introduced a hierarchical level, introduced a namespace. And you'll see on line 22 in application.cpp where that's an issue. Also, this is an opportunity to observe GTK's existence as a CAPI. And so we will mark the function definition as extern C so that it uses C level visibility from the standpoint of GTK because this is a function that GTK is going to call right it's going to call back into our program and we want to make that ride as smooth as possible and indeed we have and there's the window and now the process is complete in terms of establishing the template for an application interface in this scenario.